Hi, this is Teo from PuckerBlocks.com. Some of you asked me what watercolor paper I use for these um, tutorials on YouTube. I actually use this brand called Data Rowley. This is Aquafine and it's a 300 GSM cold press paper. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, pros and cons about this paper. Aquafine paper is the paper that I used when I was a beginner starting to learn watercolors. I bought this paper because this is relatively affordable compared to other brands such as Fabriano, Arches, Saunders. I mean for beginners you probably do not want to spend too much money but you also do not want to get a paper that is lousy in quality because paper is quite important. So for Aquafine, I think this is quite suitable for beginners because the quality is good enough but there are some pros and cons, I'll talk about it later. Let's take a look around the different uh, things that they have put up here. This is pencil, this is a brush. So you can use pencil or brush medium on this watercolor paper, obviously. This is acid-free paper, so uh, this means that the paper will not turn yellow after a certain period of time. There are 12 sheets in this uh, pad. So these are the pieces of paper. Sometimes they will run promotions where they give you 4 extra sheets, so it's usually either 12 or 16. This is the size of the paper. They come in many different sizes, so they have like the square format, they have this portrait format, they also have A3 and even up to A2, so there are a lot of different uh, formats and sizes that you can choose from. And this is cold press paper. Cold press paper generally means that this uh, texture has some grain on it. And here it says that it's a uh, green fin. So when you see texture, uh, cold press paper, you are going to see um, textures like this. So you can still see the texture of the paper. Let me zoom in closer for you. So you can see the texture of the paper showing through underneath the watercolor. Same for this side as well. For paints that are granulating like French Ultramarine, you get to see uh, an even more textural look like this or like this. So this cold press surface is something that I like because it gives, uh, it makes the watercolor a bit more interesting with the texture. Now Aquafine is also available in hot press. I think they recently introduced this. This is the hot press version. Let me see. Oh, it's here. Hot press. So for hot press, the paper surface is much smoother. So this is hot press paper. You don't see a lot of texture on the paper and you don't see the texture showing underneath the water medium as well. This is water soluble graphite by the way. So this type of paper I think is more suitable for illustrative work as compared to textured paper like this. So you can see the texture of this paper, cold press versus hot press. Whether you want to use hot press or cold press really depends on your personal preference or the subject that you are drawing. I would suggest you try both of them out because, I mean, at least for the Aquafine brand, this is not too expensive, so you can still try them out to see which one you prefer. I have been using cold press for a few years, and recently I started using hot press, and I realized that, hey, I like hot press too, but so nowadays I would just switch from hot press to cold press. I don't have any uh, preference anymore. Um, yeah. So uh, let's take a look at this. This is 100% cellulose this means that it's made from those uh, wood pulp kind of thing now for premium watercolor they are made with 100 percent cotton paper so the difference between cotton paper and cellulose is cotton paper is more durable and it can handle water very well it absorbs water much better for cellulose you can handle watercolor uh, quite well but when you start layer layering putting a lot of layers of watercolor, the paper fiber starts to break up and you will see some of the fiber coming out. So it is best not to use too many layers on um, this paper. All right, let's um, see what else there is. Um, 300 GSM, 
this paper only comes in 300 GSM, so this is relatively thick. If you want to use both sides of the paper, you can do so, uh, no problem at all. And if you use markers, it doesn't go through the paper as well. And lastly, this is made by Daily Raleigh Bracknell, England. So this paper is made in England. Let me show you some of my demo sketches and also some things that I drew. This is actually from another tutorial. So this is the type of look you can get. You can see the texture of the paper. This is quite obvious. And it handles watercolor quite well as in the sense that I can still get bright colors from this paper. For some of the lousier watercolor papers, I've actually bought one that cost around five to ten dollars and that was really very lousy. I do not have it with me because I threw it out. Anyway, the difference between that lousy paper and this paper is when I applied watercolor on that paper, the colors they um, immediately became muted, they dulled down. So here you can see how intense this color is. And this is more uh, subdued, more muted because I mixed the uh, watercolor completely before I applied it. Here I let the watercolor mix onto the paper. And this is the sketch earlier. And these are some color swatches from Van Gogh watercolor. So you can see the colors are quite strong. And this is uh, this is a color swatch with some Daniel Smith watercolor. So you can see. You can get this granulation, the transitions in colors on this watercolor paper. Notice that there are some um, decorate edges here. Actually, this is an A3 size piece of paper. I do not usually draw in A3, so I decided to just fold the paper and then tear it off and to make it into a half A3 which is A4 size. Alright, let me show you what and how the medium, different medium looks like on this paper. Today I'll be using pen and ink. I'll be using this Karen Dutch new color. These are some, um, what is this, wax pastel crayons color pencils, these are intense color pencils and of course watercolor here. So let's start with the, the pen and ink. By the way there are um, I would say variations to the texture from the front and back of the paper. It's very, the difference is very minor but you, if you look around you can probably see the difference because I think there is slightly more texture on as in you will see a bit more fine grain on one side versus the other side which is slightly smoother uh, but it doesn't really matter that much so let me just draw um, something from a photo reference so this paper it handles ink quite well because the paper is smooth enough Usually I do not use pen and ink on let's say rough watercolor paper or if the watercolor paper is too rough then it's going to present a problem when you use pen and ink because the pen tape likes to go into the valley of the paper and it will move your pen around even though you don't want it to. Now I'm going to switch over to using color pencils. For color pencils um, because the watercolor paper has texture, you do need to, if you want the color pencils to show, you might need to do the lines or you might need to shade the color pencils more. For example, if I were to shade it like this, you can still see a lot of white of the paper showing through. So for color pencil, I do recommend fine grain paper, not as coarse as cold press. So you can see that this paper is actually not that suitable for color pencil um, drawings. I want to use some colors from this area. Let me just put water onto the colors that I want to use. 
So the water actually hand, I mean the watercolor paper actually handles uh, quite well. You might want to tilt the watercolor paper, for example, upwards so that the water can flow down. You can start seeing, uh, you can start to observe the texture that are appearing already. You can let the colors mix on the paper and I think it handles that uh, quite well too. So this is usually how I paint on this type of paper. I try not to use too many layers because just now I mentioned that the quality of the paper is not very good. So if I use too many layers, um, first of all the paper fiber might come out and secondly you also because it makes too much colors the paper also I mean the colors also start to become muddy so that's not something that I want. And just now, I was using intense water-soluble color pencils on this. So it might actually dissolve the color lines. Let me show you some glazing. I'm going to put down a layer of cadmium orange and then later on I will overlay it with some phthalo blue. The left side has dried but not on the right so I will just uh, glaze on the left side and work towards the right side and then the colors will blend together on the paper. And here it should blend together. You can see the colors moving in, the orange color moving in. And this is how it looks like when it's almost dry. So this paper is good for glazing as well, just as long as you do not use too many layers because the watercolor paper is not that durable. That's all for today's review. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. I will try to answer them. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so for more drawing tips, sketching tutorials, art product reviews and more. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye.